I'm 47 years old and I live inside of a van. I'm currently living in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada for the last few days and this is actually where my van life started. You see, I was a local out here before I moved into the van and we called this place Van City, aka Vancouver. That's why my channel name is Van City Van Life because this is where it all started. And every time I come back here, I have this nostalgia, this feeling of, I don't know, a bit of excitement sometimes. And it only lasts for a day and it's time for me to leave, but it just reminds me of where it all began. So today, I'm going to take you along for another day of my van life and show you a little bit of Vancouver. It's a pretty great place. Nice to see your leg doing a little bit better today, Cruzy Bear. We're in North Vancouver in the Lynn Valley area and I am waiting for the grocery store to open because we got to grab some supplies. And then I think today we are going to go for a little walk at a park just up the hill from here that I haven't been to in a very long time. Mr. Cruzy can't come with us on that walk because he's still on limited movement because of his sore wrist. But uh, I'm kind of excited to go for a walk all by myself. Putting the groceries away. I don't have a fridge right now, so I'm just, this is my fridge box. And I'm not really refrigerating it, it's just kind of staying in the van. Some dried cranberries. Since the other day, I discovered Ziploc bags, just for getting rid of like larger, because sometimes the plastic bags that you can get things in, they're just huge. So I discovered that storing things in a van in a Ziploc bag saves a ton of room. In a traditional home, you could stick these in plastic containers or jars, but in a van, as this bag gets smaller, you just make it smaller. Where if you have a plastic container with only like a quarter of it being used, that means there is a lot of wasted space. This way you could just adjust it as it gets smaller, creating more space for more stuff. Okay, there's a super nice park just down the street from here. So let's go for a little walk this morning. Vancouver is broken up into a few different sections. You got downtown Vancouver, the city as a proper. And then on the other side of the bridge, you got West Vancouver and North Vancouver where we are right now. The North Shore is kind of just about the birthplace of mountain biking. And if you are a mountain biker from around the world, you've definitely heard of North Shore Trails. Yep, that was born right here in the North Shore of Vancouver. All right. There are these giant cables hanging here that are attached to the earth back there. And those cables on each end connect to a bridge. A bridge that's dangling over, well, dangling over a very large <laughs> valley. Oh. Woo Try that one up for size. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Think about it. We're relying on however they anchored this to the earth. Oh, there's one little wire strand here on each side. And that's it. Four cables. Is this ever an incredible view out here this morning? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lynn Canyon in North Vancouver, BC. <laughs> Oh yeah, that is super cool. 
Out here, you'll notice all that moss I keep telling you about. So amazing. It's like being in a jungle. Well, we kind of are in a little bit of a jungle. Everything out here on the west coast, and this, this is why I love this area. Everything on the west coast is always green. That's why we get so much rain out here, but it keeps everything lush and beautiful and green. There's a reason why I come back to the west coast for the winters, because it stays lush and green a majority of the year. In the winter time, we get a one or two week winter season and that's it, it's back to being this. The rest of Canada sits under winter for five to six months. Um, no thanks. I thought we would take a bit of time on this nice walk this morning and talk about a few things. One of the things being my travel plans. I don't really have any travel plans in the next little bit. I know I have to be in Nova Scotia on July 1st, but that gives me a monster chunk of time between now and then. What am I doing? I don't know. I kind of would like to wind up to the north and wind through the northern part of all the provinces, but yet something inside of me says I should probably fix my fuel gauge so I know where my gas is at. I know roughly how many kilometers I can get out of my van before it needs to be refueled, but I'm crossing Canada. It's probably a good idea. I have somebody that can do it in Calgary that guarantees he can fix it this time. The last guy that tried to repair our dash cluster in Saskatoon uh, pfft, failed. So this guy in Calgary guarantees a fix. So I might full send it to Calgary to get that done because when you take the dash cluster out, you can't drive it because there's no way for your vehicle to charge itself while the dash is out. So that completes the charging loop. So if I go out there and then I can get the guys from Ford to fix up a few things uh, mechanically that I need done, um, I have a tick. My exhaust manifold, that's it. My exhaust manifold's got a tick. So the guys can Ford, guys at Ford can fix that while my cluster is out getting repaired. So where am I going? I, I, I don't know. When am I leaving? Very soon. I'm waiting for a package to come in from Jackery um, because I need a product of theirs to do some videos for them uh, over this summer trip. So I gotta wait for that and that should be here in soon, very soon. Well, there's only one broken step. Not a bad place for those guys to be working. Oh my gosh, a little piece of paradise right here. Wow, not a bad place to wake up, come for a walk in the morning. All right, what else do we need to talk to you guys about today? Um, I don't know, <laughs> the list is in my van. Running up the stairs. That was pretty short lived. I made it a little ways. Oh, my legs are burning. They burn. Oh, yeah. Stickers. If you guys want to get stickers, we're doing the last of them. This is the end of it. I said that the last time I mentioned this. I was hoping to sell out, but I think there's like 50 more sticker packs left. They're 10 bucks for multiple stickers. That may be the last of them. I'm not sure if I'm going to do stickers anymore. Oh, who am I fooling? Trying to, trying to. <laughs> okay, ten dollars sticker packs. Links are on my website. Um, I do have new patches coming. Oh, they arrived at my shop after I left. So maybe those will be for sale at Christmas time when I get back. But we do have some Weirdos Unite patches, and they look so good. I'm so stoked to put those out there. But yeah, stickers, last chance right now. How beautiful that is. So pretty until you see more stairs. These ones go all the way up, all the way around, and up there. I think we're parked. Ah, let's go, baby, let's go. Oh, wow. A waterfall right there. Coming down off the side. Gosh, I broke a sweat out there. 
So I know I'm traveling during probably the highest cost of fuel anybody on the planet has ever seen and also the high cost of food and things like that. So I'm not sure how I'm going to alter my travels or I'm not really sure. We'll talk about that in a full blown video because I think talking about traveling during high fuel expenses is worthy of a full blown video all on its own. So keep an eye out for that one uh, pretty soon. I'm getting dripped on. I don't know if that's from the trees or if that's rain. So I know right now what I'm doing to offset some of the costs a little bit, I've taken on another brand. Um, so I've always been working with Jackery for four and some years and I've kept my advertising to a very minimal on this channel because I don't like interrupting videos with ads. But because I've slowed down on the amount of videos that I'm creating here now doing them every other day for the next little while, um, it's gonna hit the pocketbook pretty hard. So I've taken on a brand that I worked with in the past, really great company, um, Surfshark. So you'll probably be hearing some of those guys coming up here um, over, the, over the next year. We haven't signed the contract yet, but we think we're rocking that one for, for every month for the whole year. So I'm really excited because that's gonna help ease up on some of the costs of this travel. <sighs> this is gonna be an expensive trip. Oh. <sighs> people have been wondering about you. How are you doing? You want to tell them that you're walking around just fine, that you're doing okay? He's mad because he's still not allowed outside. He's allowed outside for very short little walks and that's it. Sorry buddy, we're just trying to get you back to bouncing around like a crazy guy in no time. Still not impressed? <laughs> he only has one more day left on his pain medication and that's it and I'm so thankful he's He's made a pretty decent recovery so far. They also gave me a ton of that pain medication, enough for probably maybe two or three more five day cycles. So if he happens to hurt it on our travels again or tweaks it a little bit, we have some pain medication to get him through and hopefully he just makes a good recovery this time and we don't gotta worry about it at all. I don't like it when my little boy said. Oh, the fog in this valley is so incredible. So. As you can tell, my van is super stocked. I got lots of food, all my things are loaded full. Everything I would need just in case I head north on my travels. What I mean by that is if I were to travel to some of the smaller northern towns, a lot of times groceries can be twice as expensive as they are anywhere else. And if anybody's bought groceries lately, which I'm sure you have, you know that even the cheapest place in, in town is ridiculous. So I overstocked a lot of things. I have a lot of simple stuff in my van, lots of canned foods and things that don't expire quite quick, a lot of oatmeal and things like that, just in case I do go north. Like I said earlier, I don't know where I'm going. I may travel this southern, I don't know. When I open up my lid and I'm on a hill, I use like, the, these are like side wind deflectors. I slide it up over top of here to keep the lid from falling down because right now I'm on a bit of an angle. Look how delicious that looks. Ah, oh, so good. So if you're curious what's in these things, this one contains 45% boneless lamb, 20% bone in rabbit, 25% pork heart and 10% pork organ. It's a half a pound in this one here. I'm gonna give him a pound for breakfast. Well, see? He's like, I know what that sound is, Dad. It's breakfast time, Dad. And this one's the fish one. Inside here is 55% wild sardines, 20% beef heart, 15% vegetables, and 10% beef organ. There you go, buddy. Breakfast is ready. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Rise and freaking shine, everyone. Wow. So nice. Going to see the Lynn Valley Canyon suspension bridge is free, except for you got to pay for parking. But that inspired me to go see the big bridge, which isn't far from the other one. So I thought we'd take you guys to Capilano suspension bridge. This one is big and really, really cool and awesome on a rainy day. That's true. Well, since we're being all touristy around the city that I spent a lot of time of my life in, I thought we would go to another suspension bridge. This time we're on Capilano. This one 
is way up here. It is a huge one. Down there is Capilano River. Oh, it looks amazing out here today. This bridge, on the other hand, has a bounce to it. As soon as somebody gets on it, it starts to go like <laughs> this constantly. Yep. If you're one that has an uneasy tummy, this one will definitely rock that boat for sure. Uh, those girls back there were getting some some uh, really good photos. I felt bad to photo bomb them, but I wasn't gonna wait all morning for it. How's that for a bridge? <laughs> really, you're gonna trust our lives on that? It's literally like like metal string. Come on. Up here, along all the little rooftop trees, is a giant little boardwalk just hanging there. So much fun. If I ever, which I don't think ever will happen, but if I ever build an off-grid cabin somewhere, I am for sure gonna build this out of the trees. <laughs> How cool. We've spent a lot of time walking this morning off the earth. We're walking suspended from the earth. That is a big tree. A long way down. The north side of Vancouver has some incredible incredible parks out here um, the cool thing about this one here is if you're a local resident of Vancouver your entry fee to get in gets you in all year long pretty cool I've seen worse walks to job sites before yeah that's it, that's it. <laughs> Except for you guys are wobbling like it's Friday night out here. <laughs> I think that's being generous. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Twisty stairs. Twisty stairs to... What? This time we're dangling off the side of a cliff. It's been a while since I brought you guys here. Oh, that view. Wow. It's funny because I've been to this place many times. I've brought you guys here a couple of times as well. Still just as beautiful every time. If you're scared of heights though, well, Walk straight, girl. Walk straight. This is awesome. You can see right through there. Oh, flowers. Oh, flowers budding on the end of those branches. I brought my list of things I wanted to talk to you guys about. <laughs> I brought it with me this time. Oh, never mind. <laughs> That's my grocery list. <laughs> I thought I brought the list. No, I think I did. Careful rummaging through your pockets out here. Because, you know, you may lose things like down there. Like all that stuff. <laughs> you can see little dots of garbage and things. There's probably a few cell phones and a few pairs of keys down there, I'm sure. And I'm being a tourist. I even bought myself a t-shirt.
show you guys the shirt I bought at Capilano Suspension Bridge today. Normally I'm not one to go into like the souvenir shop to buy stuff, but I did today. I thought this was a pretty awesome shirt. So it says Canada on the front and it's nicely embroidered, but down the sleeves is where I thought it was really cool. Down the sleeves there are some patches on there. Canada and a flag and a, and a little crest. And it's also down, down here with a little patch. It was a super, super nice shirt. And then it's got some silk screening on the back, but yeah, man, I felt like a tourist today. <laughs> anyway, we came downtown Vancouver here and I thought while we were here, I might as well check my mail and uh, whoa. We got a few more sets of license plates. <laughs> So everybody out there who happened to snag my address while it was posted online, please pause and don't send me anything until I get back from my big summer trip. And for those of you that have sent me through emails or contacted me otherwise, uh, wanting to know my address so you guys can send me some more license plates from my wall, please wait until I get back from this big trip. Let's open these things. <gasps> this one's from Betsy in Sebring, Florida. <laughs> So cool, Betsy, thank you. That's awesome. Emmanuel, Emmanuel? Emmanuel from Rock Hills, South Carolina. So cool. South Carolina, I don't have one of these plates. That is awesome. Oh, Emmanuel, Alabama? Shut up. Sweet home Alabama, how cool. Oh my gosh, a camper plate from South Carolina. And another Alabama plate. <laughs> Emmanuel, these are amazing. I'm so glad I put it out there on my channel to have you guys send me some license plates from my wall because I don't think traveling through Canada, I'd be able to find plates like this from the US and around other places in the world. So thank you guys. And these are flipping cool. This one has no return address name on here anywhere. So whoever sent me these from Colorado, where's this one from? And Indiana, that's cool. Whoever sent these, thanks. These are so awesome. Dan from Fort Collins, Colorado, thank you. Oh, uh, these ones from Texas are awesome. An antique plate for an antique vehicle. That is totally cool. And Matt, the, you're a rock star, Matt. Matt's like, hey man, excuse excuse the cardboard note. He goes, I, I didn't realize I had no paper until I got to the post office. That's all right, Matt. Weirdos unite, this is epic, thank you. Aw, uh, Sarah from Michigan, thank you. This is awesome. In here, this is from Logan from Tennessee. Oh, that's cool, man. Oh, Logan, thank you. This one's from David from Indianapolis. Ah, wicked, from Indiana. And this last one here is from Bradley from PA. Where's PA? PA, huh, Pennsylvania? <laughs> West Virginia? And Pennsylvania, oh, another emergency plate. I got an emergency play from a subscriber from Texas, I think that play was from. And one from Ohio. <laughs> These are so awesome. Thank you, man. Brad and Bree, much appreciated. Oh, you guys, I really appreciate this. That wall is gonna be so awesome. Sorry, I am completely trying to ignore what's out the front window of my van. Right over there, I see the word hot dog and it's been screaming my name since I pulled up here. I'm trying to eat a little bit better. Hence the big piles of all the goodness down there. But that hot dog sign over there on the other hand, screaming at me very loudly. So I'm just going to just nicely just ignore it. <laughs> anyway, I got a message from my girlfriend today and she had such a good idea. And that's asking all of you for some tips on places that her and I need to go out and adventure and visit. If you guys have any secret local spots that you want to share with us, I promise you that I will not give up the GPS location or the driving instructions to get to places. So if you have any tips for me and her to go adventure while we're on the East Coast, whether you've made that trip before and you know some great areas, or you are a local on Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, or New Brunswick, or Quebec. If you have any places that you think would be absolutely epic, they don't even have to be camp spots. They could be a little quirky or weird shop that you think I need to go check out, or maybe a house built out of glass bottles. Could be anything. 
Guys, so please do me a favor, send Emmy an email. I'll put her email at the bottom of this video here. It's emmy at thecatladyvan.com and just send her through some of the places. But we thought it might be fun to have help from you guys to plan a bit of our adventure this year. And also, you guys probably know more about the East Coast than we do. So the locals will have all the good spots. So ahead of time, thank you guys. I'm excited for Emmy to start pinning all these on a map for me and her to go explore. No, we won't be sharing the map with anybody. This is private just for us because I know there's going to be people sending through some secret spots. Please send me through the secret spots. Pretty please. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm freaking starving. I'm gonna make my own. We're gonna do the smart thing. It's gotta pull outwards, not inwards. There we go. Just steaming a little bit of broccoli here. Oh yeah. And here's some quinoa and brown rice. Oh yeah, pop some kale in there. Oh yes, please. Strange fellas brewing, you better be bringing me a delivery right now, my friend. That would be awesome. Please, that be, you bringing me beer? Are you bringing me, no, he's not bringing me any beer. Ah, it's such a good brewery too. Okay guys, look at that. Woo -wee. On top of it is gonna be some honey sriracha. This stuff is delicious. Yep, definitely better than any hot dog. I should just get out of here right after I eat it before I go over there and get a damn hot dog after. Look how delicious that looks. Ooh. That honey sriracha sauce, whoo, getting my teeth. <laughs> I feel like this stuff <laughs> all throughout my teeth. Anyway, guys, I finally found my list. It fell on the floor of the van when I was getting out. I swore I had it when we went to the suspension bridges. Anyway, guys, um, I want to thank Christine, Empress, James, and Linda for emailing me through Tim Horton's gift cards. I really appreciate it. You guys have seriously been buying my coffee every single morning. Thank you. Um, van tours. If you're in Canada and you would like to get your van tour filmed, uh, email us at vantourscanada at vancityvanlife.ca. Those emails will go directly to Paul. Paul's going to be bouncing, I think, back and forth between the U.S. and Canada over this summer, I think. So if you want to get your van tours filmed and you are right here in Canada, fire that email off a message and see if you can arrange something with Paul. I'm not sure where he's going to be, what the scenarios are. I may do some announcements along the way, but it would be awesome. Or if you know I am close to you, because I'll be traveling throughout Canada this year myself, fire me off an email as well too to that same email. And maybe, maybe it'll be either me or Paul, or maybe if we can get a group together all at once, we'll do a giant filming day somewhere. That would be super fun with me and Paul. That'd be super great. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching today's video. And uh, yeah. I had a blast today. I love days like this when I just thought I was going to make a simple video with just some like Q&A stuff or, or some update stuff. Turns out we had a blast. Don't put paper on the stove. <laughs> anyway, everybody, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon in a, in, in a few days.